British Columbia's seasonal temperate waters are one of the richest and most productive in the world. It is the Emerald Sea, a temperate ocean and very productive. It is where humpback whales roam. Where friendly sea lions greet you. Where kelp filters sunlight in large underwater forests. Where big schools of fish hang in the currents. And where a plethora of invertebrates covers reefs and walls with an abundance of life. This massive productivity means reduced visibility at times and is the result of a year-round cycle of reproduction. To be successful, each species uses its own method and time of year. Winter is a cold and sometimes snowy season, but also a busy period for certain fish to create their offspring. Rockfish are a family that has a lot of members. China, tiger, and yellowtail rockfish are but a few examples of the diversity of this species. Rockfish bear life young, and in winter gravid females, like this copper rockfish, carry up to 50,000 baby fish, waiting to be born. But many fish species lay eggs that contain a new generation, like this painted greenling. Painted greenling have a distinct courting and mating ritual. The normally pale colored male turns very dark. He moves and shakes his body in a dance to convince the female that he is the guy that can take care of her eggs. Once she is convinced that he is suitable, she lays her eggs and leaves the male to protect and take care of them. He keeps a very close eye on the eggs and regularly cleans them. As the eggs develop, the eyes, fins and bones of the new generation become visible and the little fish get restless as they want to leave their protective shell. Once out, the juveniles blend into the kelp. Many nudibank species use winter to start their cycle of reproduction. They are hermaphrodites, which means they possess both male and female sex organs. This strategy doubles the chances for offspring. When they cross fertilize, like these two giant nudibranchs are doing, they pump sperm into each other through a special organ. Afterwards, they go their own way and lay their eggs on almost any suitable surface. As the eggs are toxic to many potential predators, there is really no parental care. Barnacle-eating nudibranchs seem to gather in large masses. They follow each other until they have reached a large group and their orgies not only create large congregations of animals, but also massive amounts of egg ribbons. Not all the eggs are safe, and hungry amphissa happily feed on this free banquet of protein. There are many species of nudibranchs, and the size, shape, and color of the eggs are good indicators of the species that laid them. When the days start to lengthen and spring arrives, the sea calms down. Because of the limited hours of sunlight, the water still stays clear. Spring is a very busy season for reproduction. Many shellfish, like these leafy hornmouths, lay their eggs in this season. They gather in large groups and deposit many egg sacs. A close-up reveals that each of the small yellow egg sacs contains about 50 eggs. Sometimes entire rock faces are covered in their eggs. The Oregon Triton, related to the leafy hornmouth, does the same, but lays large concentric circles of egg sacs. Once they have hatched, the empty eggshells of the egg sacs are the only clue to what happened. One of the most anticipated events in spring is the arrival of the Pacific herring. By the millions, they flock to the shallow coastal waters to lay their eggs, which sometimes cover entire beaches. The males start the spawning by releasing the milt, which contains a chemical that induces the females to lay their eggs. The visibility is reduced to virtually zero and the water gets a beautiful blue hue. Sea lions, gulls, eagles and many others happily feed on these riches. Although some of the herring do not survive, most of them can reproduce multiple times during their life and this is called repeat spawning. Shrimp also lay their eggs in spring. 
but take care of them in a very different way. They start by gathering on kelp, where they can hide on either side of the leaf from any potential predator. After their hanky-panky, the female carries the eggs inside her abdomen, and once fully developed, she releases them in the water. This three-spined shrimp is clearly full of eggs, and the young shrimp have already developed their eyes. The elegant shrimp prefers the large orange sea pens, and uses the stem as a solid place to hold on to. In late spring, red rock crabs can be seen mating, and the larger male holds the smaller female in an embrace that can last for days. Eventually, he fertilizes her eggs, which he carries with her whilst buried in the sand. At night, when the tide and currents are ideal, she releases the young ones by shaking them out of their egg casings with repeated thrusts. They are on their own right from the get-go, and after swimming around, they settle on the seafloor. Some of them get a ride from jellyfish, but they have to be careful not to get entangled in the jelly's tentacles and become food. Summer has finally arrived, and the water changes. Plankton is reproducing in large numbers and gives a green hue to the water. The sunlight and warmth of this season are essential elements for this massive bloom. Below it, large clouds of mycids, a type of krill, cover the reef. They form an important food source for fish, invertebrates and marine mammals alike. Sea stars can be seen spawning in this season. Their strategy is one that is called broadcast spawning and is used by a number of other species. The method is very simple. Males release sperm from special pores in their arms and the females release eggs. The eggs and sperm mingle in midwater and so create a new population of starfish. This same method is also used by jingle shells and sea cucumbers. All this spawning reduces the visibility and light thus creating good conditions for species used to dark waters. In summer, ancient species of sharks and shark relatives, like this spotted ratfish, leave the deep water in which they live during most of the year and come to shallow waters to lay their eggs. Ratfish have been around for some 345 million years and are one of the oldest species a diver can encounter underwater. Males mate with females and with their claspers insert sperm strings, so-called spermatophores, into the female. This male has just mated and the inflated claspers are clearly visible and a sperm string is still trailing behind him. After fertilization, the female pushes out two egg cases that she drags behind her until they snag onto something that pulls them out completely. The eggs will develop into little redfish that immediately go to deep water for safety. In autumn, the water changes again, and as the plankton recedes, the visibility improves. Early in the year, the largest octopus known to man roamed around the reef in search of food and a partner. Now, in autumn, the gravid female finds a discreet place and hangs strands of eggs on the ceiling of her hideout. She completely stops eating and her only task is to protect and gently agitate the eggs to keep them oxygenated. Once the little octopus are fully formed, she uses her arms to gently move the eggs and open them for the little ones to escape. Having fulfilled her duty, she will die shortly after. This is called terminal spawning. One of the last acts of autumn is performed by these giant plumos and enemies. They are either reproducing by splitting off a part of their body or become broadcast spawners. The females expel large veils of purple eggs. Elsewhere on the reef, males release their sperm in the current, where it will meet up with the eggs. And so, the plumos forests grow year after year. The variety in methods and seasons for reproduction are very different for each species and have evolved over millennia but each has their success, which is proven by the productivity of the BC waters.